I'm going to show you how to increase your oxygen with a simple breathing technique. There is a lot of confusion on this oxygen topic. And one of the big ones is if you deep breathe, you're going to get more oxygen. That is absolutely not true. In fact, if you want to prove it to yourself, just start deep breathing right now and see how long it takes before you end up passing out. You're going to start feeling dizzy. You're going to feel tired. So yes, when you're deep breathing, you're getting more air, but you're not getting more oxygen. You know, we have this false idea that oxygen is good and CO2 is bad. It's a waste product. But if we take a look at what's in air, there's a lot of oxygen. There's not a lot of CO2. If we do a comparison between oxygen and CO2, in units, it'd be like 160 units of oxygen per given amount of air to one third of 1%. That's 0.3, okay, CO2. So the question is, where is the CO2 coming from when we exhale? It's coming from our cells. The mitochondria takes in oxygen, burns stuff, and releases CO2. So our bodies are CO2 machines. Of course, with plants, it's just the opposite. They eat CO2 and they put out oxygen. But I want you to understand uh, something about CO2 and oxygen. There's something called the Bohr effect. That's B-O-H-R. And the Bohr effect kind of goes like this. The oxygen will not be released from your red blood cells unless you have enough CO2. The amount of oxygen that's released from your blood into your cells is dependent on CO2. If you're breathing a lot, right, and you're not able to have enough CO2 in there, you're going to get too much oxygen oxygen. Too much oxygen is very damaging to the body. If you gave a baby pure oxygen, you can actually cause blindness. You can cause an epileptic seizure. You could cause that baby to go in a coma. There's a lot of oxidation that happens with too much oxygen. And this is why like deep breathing is not the best way to get a lot of oxygen and relaxation. Anyone that's in a panic state is going to be hyperventilating. They're going to be breathing excessively, trying to get more air. And it's, it's very counterintuitive because they're going to get less air. You have something called acute hyperventilation and chronic hyperventilation, where a lot of people are in this chronic phase. We know about the acute hyperventilation when you're in a panic attack and you're breathing excessively and you don't feel very good. I want to increase your awareness on another condition called chronic hyperventilation. Another name for that is called carbon dioxide syndrome. This is a really interesting book I'm reading and I'm sharing some data from this book. So the carbon dioxide syndrome is basically a lack of carbon dioxide because the person is consuming too much air. And basically I think a lot of this is triggered by stress and the stress is constantly keeping us trying to breathe more through our mouths and this depletes the CO2 and now we can't absorb oxygen into the cells. And this causes problems with the heart, heart stress. It creates a condition of hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen. It creates fatigue, insomnia, muscle twitching, and this other symptom, which is an increased histamine, which is fascinating, that a low amount of CO2 will increase histamines, which is gonna cause a stuffy nose. Also, this lack of CO2 will create less carbonic acid and the blood becomes more alkaline. And then we have a big problem removing calcium from the cells. Calcium starts to accumulate because you have this chronic hyperventilation and a lack of CO2 is actually another reason why you would build up calcium in the tissues. And then the nerves don't work. You feel tingling. You probably notice that when you blow up a balloon or something, you might see stars or feel tingling throughout your body. Well, that's what's happening. The pH of your blood is changing. So just as a smoker has a lack of oxygen in their cells, when you get too much air, you also have a lack of oxygen deeper in the cells. Now there's enough oxygen that's stuck in your red blood cells, but it's not being released, which is going to cause you to try to breathe more and the whole cycle starts going around and around. Now there's a very simple solution to fix this problem and train your body to breathe in a certain way, to get oxygen deep into the cells 
to resolve a lot of health problems that you might not even be connecting to this problem of lack of CO2. So number one, relax breathing, okay? You wanna breathe very soft and gentle. You want to breathe through your diaphragm and your stomach, not your upper chest. So you wanna breathe in slowly for five seconds and then exhale for five seconds and then do that consistently in a gentle way without strain, especially before you go to sleep at night, uh, especially when you're driving in traffic or watching TV, you can start to train your body to breathe correctly. Because when someone's under stress, they kind of like, <sighs> <sighs> so this breathing method is one thing that you can control and change your entire physiology. You can pull yourself out of a sympathetic flight or fight stress mode. And just so you know, I do this before I go to bed every single night. You can even get a free app that helps you time your breathing. So you can actually visualize like a ball expanding and contracting or some type of uh, sound mechanism or some timing mechanism to practice this breathing in and breathing out frequency. All right, number two, you wanna breathe through your nose, not your mouth, okay? The nose will condition the air, humidify it, it cleans it, it filters out things. Every hour, you're consuming about 500 liters of air. And if you go through your nose, you'll actually have way better quality air than if you go through your mouth because, first of all, you don't filter any microbes out or any particulates. They all just go right into the lungs. Whereas breathing through your nose, you have a chance to have a good immune filtering mechanism. You also have restriction of air, which, by the way will increase your oxygen by 20% just by breathing through your nose. It's going to feel like your air is restrictive, but you're going to get more oxygen. And three and four involve sleeping at night. You can get those nose strips, those nasal strips. They go right across here, opens up the top of your sinuses. You can breathe a little bit better, especially if you have a stuffy nose. And then you can get some mouth tape, okay, that you just put a little piece of tape right here when you're sleeping at night to train you to breathe through your sinuses. So you can filter the air all night long. You can get more oxygen. You'll have better sleep. You won't wake up with a dry mouth. You probably won't be snoring anymore and you'll wake up feeling refreshed. There's some additional information on drinking carbonated water which is basically CO2 and water that I think you'll find very fascinating. I am way more hydrated when I consume carbonated water than if I just drink plain water. And for that information, I put this video up right here. Check it out.